We are taking a dive into the deep sea again today to look at some more creatures and things that call the Mariana Trench their home. From a few of the coolest jellyfish, to an adorable octopus, to a bunch of information on hydrothermal vents, the Mariana Trench never fails to deliver. What is up life's biggest questions viewers? I am your host today, Olivia Kozlovsky, and we are here to talk part two of the top 10 weirdest things found in the Mariana Trench. Let's get into it. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Bentho Code. On. These guys are a species of jellyfish, but they are unlike any I have ever seen before. They are quite small and compact, with their bell measuring around 2 to 3 centimeters, and they like to live deep in the oceans around 762 meters down, and they are usually found right on the sea floor. Despite their small size, they still have about 1,500 little wispy tentacles that help them move through the icy depths of the Mariana Trench. These guys like to feed on small little crustaceans and unicellular organisms, some of which are bio luminescent, which has led to one unique feature about them. While the outer part of the bell on these jellies is the usual transparent color we are used to seeing on jellyfish, there is a layer on the inside that is red. This color works to conceal the bioluminescence of their prey that they just ate so that they aren't just a dead giveaway in the deep sea. In our number 9 spot today we have hydrothermal vents. The Mariana Trench is part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, which is a tectonically active region where plates are colliding and causing subduction, which is how the trench itself was formed. Through this tectonic activity, as seawater seeps downwards through the oceanic crust, it gets really hot and becomes very rich in chemicals. This leads to the water becoming so buoyant that it comes back out of the surface of the sea floor, and this is what is called a hydrothermal vent. And as it turns out, the Mariana Trench has quite a few of them. These vents are a super important part of the ecosystem in the region, and the water coming up out of the vent is so chemically rich that it ends up being a feeding ground for the creatures that can with withstand the extremely hot temperature. So while the animals seen on the vents are plentiful, there is not a wide variety. In our number 8 spot today we have the frilled shark. Ok, regular sharks are of course scary and powerful, but the frilled shark looks extra terrifying because it actually looks like a full on monster. The frilled shark is a species of deep sea shark that got its name from the 6-7 to seven frilled gills it has on the sides of its snake like body. This shark can grow up to 1.8 meters or 6 feet long and its mouth is full of 300 razor sharp teeth. This shark was one of the first deep sea species to ever be discovered because how could you possibly miss it? But because it makes its home so deep in the ocean and because of the fact that it cannot withstand the pressure change when brought up closer to the surface, a lot remains a mystery about these guys. In our number 7 spot today we have the ping pong tree sponge. While this sounds like the cutest little creature and it truthfully doesn't look all that scary, the ping pong tree sponge holds a lot more than meets the eye. These guys get their name from their appearance as it quite literally appears like a tree that is growing little ping pong balls, but those little ping pongs are exactly what makes this tiny creature so fierce. They are lined with little hook like extensions that are designed to trap anything that gets too close. From there the ping pong tree sponge slowly consumes their prey while they are still alive. We really took a dark turn when we started out with something that seemed so cute and harmless. In our number 6 spot today we have vent crabs. Ok, so now that we've talked about hydrothermal vents, we can talk about one of the creatures that loves those things, and that is the aptly named vent crab. These guys swarm to the vents in such numbers that they can be used to help scientists identify the location of vents. Apparently these crabs only live on hydrothermal vents and aren't found anywhere else in the ocean. These white crabs, when young, have eyes that would be comparable to other kinds of crabs, but because of their extreme habitat, throughout their life they adjust. Upon metamorphosis, their eyes degenerate and become Become just naked retinas. Hydrothermal vents produce light in infrared wavelengths, and the degeneration of their eyes helps the crabs be able to see this kind of light, although it does leave them blind to basically everything else. It's crazy to learn about how these deep sea creatures have evolved in order to suit their preferred environments. In our number 5 spot today we have the Casper octopus. This just may be the cutest creature we have on today's list, and it was discovered fairly recently by a deep diving robot called the Deep Discoverer. This little robot spotted a lonely octopus just hanging out by itself on a flat rock and it went over to learn more. From there it totally stumped scientists because it kind of resembled a known shallow water octopus, but this one was of course being found much, much deeper in the ocean. Another reason it stumped scientists is because of its colour, which is where it gets its name from. Most octopuses have certain pigments that allow them to change colour, but this little guy was ghostly and iridescent, which suggested that it didn't have 
those same pigments. At its first discovery, scientists were pretty sure that they had stumbled upon an entirely new species of octopus and perhaps a new genus as well. In our number four spot today, we have the Gran Rojo jellyfish. This jellyfish was first found in the mid 1990s, but it wasn't until 2003 that it was officially classified as a new species, and with this came a new subspecies of jellyfish as well. Before classification, this creature was being referred to as Big Ugly, which is just so rude. So thankfully, it became much more affectionately named Big Red. These guys are the largest of all sea jellies, with their bell measuring around 76 centimeters in diameter. They have four to six fleshy arms rather than the slender tentacles we are used to seeing on jellies. Another thing that sets these ones apart from the other transparent jellyfish is that these guys are a gorgeous red color all over. Since their discovery, there have only been 23 specimens found, and this, coupled with their extreme deep sea habitat, means that there is still so much about them that remains unknown. In our number three spot today, we have the Diokoku Seamount. I guess this could be a list of hydrothermal vent things, because here we go again talking about them more, but I promise it's worth it. This seamount is located in the Mariana Arc, about 325 meters or 1,060 feet below sea level, and it was found to be hydrothermally active in 2003. In 2014, it was discovered that the submarine volcano was either actively erupting or had been very recently. Along with these discoveries came the realization that this seamount also features a pool of liquid sulfur that was covered in some sort of black coating. This little sulfur cauldron is approximately 4.5 by 3 meters large and is 420 meters deep. There are rising gases like carbon dioxide and hydrogen that are coming from the pool and they are moving that black crust that sits on the top. The rising gases appear like smoke, but underwater, which is just so cool. The really cool thing about this little sulfur lake is that it is almost an anomaly on Earth, and one of the few other sulfur lakes that are known is actually located on Jupiter's moon Io. While there have been a few other liquid sulfur lakes found on Earth, the one located near this seamount is the most impressive one we have ever found on our planet. In our number two spot today, we have the aluminum plated amphipods. Okay, I'm willing to admit I might be the only one who thinks this is cool, but maybe I'm not. So that is why I had to talk about these guys today. Amphipods are creatures that can be found in oceans throughout the world at different depths, but the ones found in the Mariana Trench are unlike those anywhere else. These guys are found in the deepest point on Earth, the Challenger Deep. Amphipods usually have shells made out of calcium carbonate, but the extreme environment of the Challenger Deep would make those shells just simply dissolve, so these guys had to make some insane natural adjustments so that they aren't just swimming around naked. When scientists collected a few from the deep sea, See, they realized that their exoskeletons contained aluminum. How? Well, apparently, these guys use sugar based chemicals in their bellies to extract aluminum ions from the mud on the seafloor. In alkaline seawater, these aluminum ions form what is called aluminum hydroxide gel, which is something that we as humans use for things like treating an upset stomach. So, once they have this gel, it basically coats their shell to keep them safe and sound. I don't know about you guys, but that's one of the coolest things I've ever heard a shrimp do. In our number one spot today, we have giant two worms. Okay, we are ending off with one more hydrothermal vent creature, and that is the giant tube worm. Like the vent crab, these guys live and thrive in the extreme environment near a hydrothermal vent, and they feed off of the tiny bacteria in the area, as well as the chemicals coming from the vent water. They grow to be around eight feet in length, but they have no mouth or digestive tract, so those bacteria I just mentioned are super important to their livelihood. These bacteria live inside of them, and somehow this relationship forms a wonderful symbiosis where they can both thrive. These tube worms also don't have eyes, so they have the ability to sense movements and vibrations. If anything makes them feel threatened, they can retreat into their protective tubes to hopefully keep them safe. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed today's video, and don't forget to subscribe. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye!